Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk about documentation. Yes! Let's talk about documentation. So, this is basically a user request video where one of my subscribers <clears throat> they reached out and asked whether or not I had any experience about writing documentation and making good documentation and I'm so grateful that th this person reached out because I actually do. I have, uh, I was one of the, well I basically was the person who wrote most of the, well, most of the onboarding documentation and help tools for my, the beginners who were starting out, who were basically just starting after me at my previous job, so I have had a chance to actually get some feedback on my documentation writing skills, hopefully that you will you will like them as well. I don't, I'm don't. i just going to show you a few basic things that I like to do when I write documentation and how I think about documentation. But we're going to give double value on this one because what happens when you want to write documentation? Well, <clears throat> if you think that documentation is something that is easy to maintain or write or just something you kind of put in a bucket somewhere on Google Docs or something like that, you are sorely mistaken because one of the most common problems with documentation, well I would say there's two issues. The first and foremost thing is that documentation rots very very quickly. It gets outdated very quickly and the second thing is that nobody f can find it the, and that's actually a big issue. If you put something, if you are if you don't think about things in the right way, you will actually find that your documentation never gets used and it's just legacy, it's just wasting space. So we're going to talk about why documentation is important and how to write, in my opinion, good documentation and how do you share it with the right people. So as I said, the, this is a user request video where the requirement was that the solution was self-hosted, which makes this a little bit interesting because if you need to self-host your documentation solution, I actually only have one alternative that I've ever used that is not Jira or Confluence. And if you don't know what Jira and Confluence are, that's okay. These are Atlassian products that are extremely well established in the professional IT business. And the, as I said, the requirement was what, that the solution was self-hosted. And I'm never, a Jira is not self-hosted and Confluence is not self-hosted. I don't even know if you can host these things yourself. I don't, it doesn't really matter, but that, that's, that's a, at least a requirement. So what is the solution that I use or I have used when I do self-hosted type of documentation? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's called Bookstack. So Bookstack is basically this open source platform, if you will. You can download the sources if you want to, but actually I, I use the Docker image, which is very convenient. So it's basically a PHP server that you can hook up to a MySQL database and then just store your documentation. And it has all the features that I personally look for in a tool that I use for documentation. So let's dive right in. First and foremost, let's just very quickly look at the Docker Compose file because it's actually that simple. If you have Docker installed, you can get this up and running in minutes. You just copy paste this this Compose file, which is this lovely little thing here. I'm not going to talk about Docker Compose because that's another video. And then you run your command and it spins up your server. And then you have, yeah, you basically have this this web page. That's it. And the default login is admin admin ad dot com and password should be the password. Yes, here we are. So here's my panel and I've taken the liberty to create some stuff here because so it's not completely blank, but I'll show you all of the the basic stuff, right? So you have some basic settings here where you can name your application, you can do some very very basic things. Disable comments, well, I wouldn't. I w it's actually not nice to say these basic things because this is a lot more elaborate than you might think. And then you have, of course, the ability to grant user accounts. You can actually also allow public ask access to this, and that you know you should probably not do that for an internal tool, but you can if you want to. But this is powerful because when you can actually add new users, and even more importantly, you can add roles. You can actually, as an admin, monitor and control 
who creates what and who has access to what. So you can kind of segment documentation. If there's sensitive information in one part of the company, you can mo make sure that some people in that, re that, that role doesn't have access and so forth. You can create custom roles as well, which I, I, this is like a hard requirement. Bear, this, this needs to be there. And then you can actually like just have a look at your profile, easy peasy things. Like th this is not all that super important, but it's a nice thing to have. This thing though is the important thing to have. Let's search for dev. So we got some search results and we got a hit on a book. And basically what I wanted to show you here is that you can actually do text searches across all the documents. It used to be the case that when I wanted to do self-hosted documentation, I, I created a very bad implementation of this type of application that you're, that Bookstack, Bookstack basically is. And then I hooked that up to a Elasticsearch database and indexed all the documents in Elasticsearch. And I used that to do the searching, but this works as nicely, I think. I don't see, like, this is an off-the-shelf solution that does everything that I want, and it's open source, which means that I can check it for security issues if I'm paranoid about security and it's running in Docker container and it does everything I need and I own all the data. There's, no, I, I don't really see any type of downside to this solution. So let's talk about the concepts that are specific to book stack. So you have a book and you can have a chapter and you can have a page and we'll talk about those in just a mo moment. But let's now dive into a little bit of my thoughts about what good documentation is. So first and foremost, I try to keep my documentation segmented into groups based on the semantics of my company and I'll just take my own company for a for a slight type of reference. This is not the exact structure of my own company but it's very similar. So we have the business people, we have the developers, and then we have the QA assist, uh, QAs, basically people who assert quality of product managers and so forth. The people who basically make sure that the quality of the application is up to, up to scratch. Now I haven't done anything with the business and QA part, so we'll just focus on dev because we don't really have to do much to illustrate the basics of what I think about the Google documentation. So here is the dev book. And a book is just a collection of chapters and pages. And a chapter is this thing, orange thing here, which is just basically a collection of pages that you can segment into a, like, a group, if you will. Or you can just make pages like this. And you can export all of this, of course, as files if you wanted to. You can create a new page, a new chapter. Let's just look at how it looks when you create a new page like this. You get this very, well, standard. Uh, this is actually very nice. It has all the features you could want. You can set colors for text and basically do most of the things that you would expect to be able to do in something like Google Docs or so forth. So I really, I, I play, I've played around with this quite a lot and it's, it does everything that I need. You can create links and all the stuff that I need personally when I create documentation. So what's the mindset here when we talk about documentation? Well, first and foremost, the way that I structure my documentation is that I always think in terms of company terms. And what do I mean by company terms? I'm talking about the sort of things that you very naturally start saying in conversation at your company. Now, at my company, we call, whenever there's a down, like basically something goes down in production, we usually have, we have what we call an incident report. And an incident report is just a collection of documentation of what, uh, let's call them let's just call them by their name postmortems and postmortem is basically just an assessment or a documentation that states what went went wrong what's what's that at what time did things go wrong and in what order did things happen i'm not going to dive too much into postmortems but you can have a look at those they're fairly useful to know about so here I created this very simple little page with a bunch of links that go to external resources because at my person you know for us at my company we have for some reason stored everything in Google Docs so creating links that go to an external resource is, is fine but there's nothing stopping me from creating a incident reports chapter and just filling out all the incident reports inside of this uh, of this product basically or uh, in Bookstack so apart from that we have an onboarding section here which is just a page with some documentation for your first day this is one of the things that I did very quick like 
it's very nice to, for new begin for people who come to the company to have a onboarding process and all an onboarding has to be is to give you some basic guidelines and we'll explain to the ju usually it's a junior or a very new hire just to explain to them kind of what are what's expected of them when it's expected and what they should focus on and so forth to give them some kind of guidance so it's nice to have because what you remember when somebody comes in for the first in the first day you need to take care of them and you need to hold them by the hand and introduce them to everybody and it's nice to give them something to do because trust me you will not be able to occupy them full time for eight hours the first day so give them some schoolwork if you will this is a way very nice thing I personally think I found it very useful and then we have some first week stuff you can kind of expand on this first day first month first so forth and so forth so that's basically onboarding but if we take a look at start the project what's this page here well this this touches on the the thing I was saying earlier there are things that very naturally become a habit in your company things that are what i call the day-to-day -day things the things that come up very naturally in conversation and this is just an example but starting the project just knowing where the code is knowing where to get it and knowing how to actually install all the dependencies and doing all of that stuff that's something that everybody who needs to be able to do and that's how I think about documentation I document everything that is a part of the daily work or something that is th that where you need to know this in order to do something at the company for my company for example we have several different application setups that is fairly intricate and are the sort of things where you kind of have to write down the steps so that when you come back because people forget you I mean some of the stuff we only have to do every six months but you still have to do them in the right order so it's important to have some nice documentation of how to do this and what I'm going to show you now is my preferred way to document something like this. So what I do is that I I argue that it's you, you I go by step, always step stepwise. So I say start by cloning the project by running the following command, and then I always always show a screenshot or a code snippet or something an example because I want a visual representation of what I'm doing for the people who are reading this because I want them to see and feel secure in that they are in the right place and doing the right thing so what could we learn from this well okay if we are a beginner reader we see immediately that oh, okay we're in a terminal and we're executing the command in the terminal it's a small thing but it helps a lot when you have an image to kind of attach yourself to uh, when, when you're following the commands once the reaper is on your computer run the following command and then it's the next command once the command is finished you should see something like this and this is important always always when you when you are finished with a task show a representation of how things should look or try to illustrate how things should be when the person is finished with your tutorial or with your with your guide if you will and then we have this thing here you can go you can now go to browse to your browser and visit locals and i just have a nice link here that gets you to the page immediately and then this thing happens here ask your closest manager for your login credential and make sure that sure to change your password and this is important I when I add an image when I give instructions on somewhere to click or somewhere to go or do something specific on a web page or something like that always 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 get a image and point to where the person needs to pay the pay attention because I've seen so many times people have just written down oh yeah you just click the admin button and people go to the web page and they go where's the where, where's the admin button they have no idea well, let's go, click settings because just because you say so in text and when you are you as the, the 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 author of this tutorial you're most likely already you already know where everything is so in your head you see the image of how the page looks and you say oh it's going to be there but the person who reads this for the first time doesn't necessarily have an as easy time with finding the stuff that you have so clearly in your head so i really always i always do this I use Sketch for that. Sketch is my go-to for everything image-wise, so I do use it for absolutely everything when I need to illustrate something on a page. And as you can see here, you can add comments and stuff of that nature to in Bookstack as well. Finally, so to not bore you too much with all of this stuff, is the thing that I think is as important as most 
of the things that I've talked about so far and that is to create documentation sparingly you only want to have the bare bone minimum amount of documentation possible because documentation is a cost that you pay in order for for things to <clears throat> to run smoothly the more the, the see you see as i said earlier documentation gets outdated very quickly that means that you should only have the bare minimum amount of documentation and the documentation that you write should be really really good that's what i was trying to illustrate here with the start the project tutorial or walkthrough because that's that as you could see that's a lot of like that tutorial could have been much simpler just being a few pieces of text but it was a high quality step by step guide that's useful and relevant and that's going to actually provide some value but it's also the sort of thing that is going to be repeated over and over and over and those steps are most likely going to stay fairly the same it's a valuable documentation had it been something that changes next week i wouldn't have done this tutorial whatsoever because there if it's if something changes all the time it's not really worth having documentation for it or at least you should just have something that's very easy to change but then there are things that are what I call practices and we come back to this concept I said earlier go broad broad when you talk about about uh, different document things that are worthy of documentation think of it as the Google search engine because when somebody comes to your company and they need to search for your documentation that explains something to you you have to think about it from the searchers perspective it doesn't matter if you have all these high uh, you can have a million documents of really cool documentation that explains exactly how that person is going to do some specific task but if you haven't made the titles searchable or comprehensive the person has no way of finding the document in the in the first place you have to think about searchability above all else when you create documentation this is something that I do a lot. So one of the very common task for a programmer when they come to a company is to ask the question, okay, how do I create a new service or how do I create a new model? What are our coding practices? And this is what I will do. I will just naturally say, assume if we have rules for how we declare a model or a service or some other coding practice that we abide by, I will create a page or a document that explains that in the same term that we would use when we are just speaking to each other. Yeah, oh yeah, Rob, Bob, you're going to create a new service. Awesome, just follow the steps. Or somebody says, hey, Eric, can you create a new model? Yeah, sure, do you know how to do it? Yeah, just search in the documentation because there's gonna be a document there for how we create models at this company. That's all you need. And then you show a example. Always, always, always show an example. Images are worth a thousand words. And that's basically how I personally do documentation. And as I said, usually I use Jira and Confluence in my day-to-day -day job. But for the few times I've actually had to have a self-hosted solution, Bookstack is a very, very nice alternative. I hope you have a great day.